What's up, YouTubers? Welcome to Deluxe Man's Q&A Corner. Every Wednesday, I will be answering your questions in under 15 minutes. If you have a question for me that you want to be answered, please leave it on my Ask FM page. And if I don't get to your question in this video, I will most likely get to it in my next one. So stay tuned for that. With that said, let's get started. Deluxe Man. How do you feel about the Wyatt family breaking up and Luke Harper going on his singles push? Well, I'll talk about Luke Harper first. I think it's well-deserved. I think he's going to do awesome. In terms of the Wyatt family, though, too soon. Oh, man. And the crazy part is I don't really think the WWE got the most out of the Wyatt family. They never became tag team champions. They were dominant for a good period of time, and they had some awesome matches with the Shield, and they were only together for a year, I think. Yeah, for a year. And then they break them up. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, it's just an indication of how bad the creative process is in the WWE. How can you not have anything for the Wyatt family? I don't know what the hell they're doing. Can they bring them back together? Sure. Is Eric Rowan pretty much a dead character? I don't know. I don't even know what they're going to do with Bray Wyatt. I'm assuming a face turn. I'm going to assume that. But as of right now, it's in the air. We will see what happens. But if all indications point to a breakup for the Wyatt family, I think it's a bad idea. And that's my thoughts on that. But Luke Harper, I think, will be fine on his singles push. Um, your thoughts on Hulk Hogan's 2002 WWE comeback. Very short-lived. Um, kind of like what's happened with the Wyatt family breaking up too soon. Um, Hulk Hogan had a babyface run in 2002 that I felt could have gone a much longer time. Um, he didn't last all that long. I think he stayed until... Shoot, when did he... I'm going to assume SummerSlam. No, it wasn't SummerSlam. He left before then. Um, it was around... Uh, somewhere around SummerSlam where he left. But he came back with the NWO. Had that amazing WrestleMania Classic with The Rock. Turned babyface. Beat Triple H for the WWE Championship. Held it for a month. Then dropped it to The Undertaker. Then had some awesome feuds with... You know, Kurt Angle had a tag team championship run with Edge. Uh, man, it was good stuff. And I really do feel like they could have done more with Hulk Hogan, but I don't know. Maybe he decided to take a break. He came back in 2003 where he fought a heel rock. I know that for sure. And had that awesome feud with Vince McMahon. But as for 2002, very short-lived. Which is better, anime or manga? I prefer visual, um... As in, on my TV or watching it through a uh, you know, video or something like that. I don't mind reading. I'm just not a reader. You know, I would rather watch it on a TV screen or in a movie theater. That's me. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, guys. But, yeah, I, I would rather watch an anime of a series. Uh, that's just me. So, when was the last time you were a John Cena fan? 2006. Um... The tail end of 2006, the night I turned or, you know, became a l much more less John Cena fan was when he fought Edge at Unforgiven. And I felt like that night when John Cena beat Edge, I wasn't very happy with that. I thought Edge was a much better performer. I thought he was a much better champion. And for John Cena to beat him, I was kind of like... Come on, man. Again, going off of the mentality that the champion was the best performer in the company, at that point in time, Edge was clearly, clearly the best performer in WWE. And for the WWE to give the championship to John Cena, I was just like, okay, obviously, you're just doing that because you like him, and it's not really what the fans want. You know, that was my thing about that. It wasn't... How do I put this? Although, again, I, I wasn't much of a John Cena fan after that. I didn't start hating him 
um, until my like much later, like 2007 was when I started to really hate him. Uh, but in terms of you know me being like a big big John Cena fan, that was the last night that I really was. So that's how I'm gonna answer your question, and hopefully that was clear and you understood that. Um, do you think that Kevin Nash is an all-time great? Um, I don't see why not. <laughs> I mean, look at what he's done. Uh, he was, well, Big Daddy Cool Diesel, former World Heavyweight Champion, WWE Champion, and WCW World Heavyweight Champion. But he also was a catalyst of the NWO. Um, was able to spearhead WCW in the Monday Night Wars. Uh, has some really good matches and really good feuds, both in WWE and WCW. I don't see how anybody can say he's not an all-time great. I'll tell you what, if the WWE decides to induct Kevin Nash into the Hall of Fame, I will not be mad at that. I will happily accept his induction because he deserves it, in my personal opinion. What if Hulk Hogan never turned heel in 1996? Then I don't think wrestling would be as popular as it is right now. And the WWE would be stuck in the 1994 mode of cartoonish characters. So, yeah. There you go. Your thoughts on the Sting and Hogan match at Starcade 1997. I've only seen the match once or twice. Um, but I do agree with the general assessment of the match being a lot less um, interesting than the build-up leading up to it. The build-up to the match was amazing, but the match itself was kind of a letdown. The booking involving Bret Hart was kind of wacky and all the stuff involving it, and I don't know. I, I just don't think they had the best match they could possibly have. Especially with all of that really, really good build-up, so. That's my thoughts on that. Um, and again, it's coming from a perspective of someone who's only seen it once or twice. Your thoughts on Kevin Nash ending Goldberg's streak at Starcade 1998. Stupid. Stupid. I still think it's really, really stupid. That should have never freaking happened. Now, do I think Goldberg should have eventually lost the streak? Yeah, but to Kevin Nash? No. Nah, that was dumb. And in hindsight, what made it worse is a couple of weeks later, Nash would drop the belt to Hulk Hogan in one of the worst, worst title matches I've ever seen. The finger poke of doom. Oh my god. That may have been, actually it probably was, one of WCW's biggest death nails. It's one of those things you look back on and go, God, that was stupid. Why did y'all do that? You know, uh, sorry. Gobert, you can have your opinion on him, whether he's a good wrestler or he's not, um, or he's overrated. Um, one of my favorite characters in wrestling history. He was a beast. The last dominant android-like character that we have seen. And if you have not seen Gobert, dear God, please go back and watch him. And WCW, and WWE somewhat, but WCW was when he was at his best. Um, who is a good one. What is your favorite wrestling entrance theme? Who? um, I gotta go with Stone Cold Steve Austin. That theme just gets me pumping every single time. And, uh, again, I do like other ones. I'm a big fan of Shawn Michaels' theme. And um, The Rock's theme. Uh, well, I'm a fan of all The Rock's themes. But uh, the classic HBK theme, can't get enough of that. Um, oh, man, there's a lot of them I like. Uh, Daniel Bryan's theme, you know, Fly the Valkyries. Um, really like that one. Because uh, it's a rendition of Ride of the Valkyries. And that's a very classical uh, theme that I'm really a huge fan of. Um... DX was good. Triple H's uh, Bow Down to the King by Motorhead. Love that one. I also love Hulk Hogan's theme. You know, if I had a list of top five themes, Austin would be number one. 
Hulk Hogan would be number two. The Rock would be number three. Well, no, no. HBK would be number three. The Rock would be number four. And number five would be The Undertaker's theme. You know, those are the top best themes in wrestling history. In my personal opinion. So there you go. Um, do you think that Hulk Hogan, Goldberg's WCW World Heavyweight Championship match on Nitro should have been on pay-per-view? Um, the more I think about it, would it have been a better financial decision to have it on pay-per-view? Yes. But do I think it should have been on pay-per-view? Uh, I'm fine with it being on Nitro. I wasn't making a big deal out of it. Um, and I remember watching the match, actually. Uh, not as a kid, but watching it way before it, it, it actually aired. Um, not before, after it aired. Excuse me. Way after it aired. Excuse me, how can I watch something before it airs? Um, what I was trying to say, I watched it way after it actually premiered. And I still love the match regardless. Um, so I'm just going to say no. I'm not really that bothered by it not being on pay-per-view. But I do agree with those who say it would have been better in business sense for WCW to have it on pay-per-view. So there you go. Your thoughts on Angelina Love? Good wrestler. That's all I can really say about her. Um, stuff with beautiful people is all right. You know, I like Velvet Sky more as eye candy, but I will say Angelina Love is a better wrestler. So there you go. That's all I can say about her. Um, do you think that Vince McMahon needs to step down as the chairman and CEO of WWE? Yes and no. I do think Vince needs to let loose on some things in his company, like creative. Get your hand out of that pot, Vince. You don't know what the hell you're doing, and you have this iron grip on these creative writers, and it's really hindering them from producing the best show possible. First off, get rid of all these 20, 15, 30 people on the creative team, bring it down to 5, 4, 3, and work with them, and just let them have fun. Like NXT. NXT, from what I heard, only has like two, three writers. That's all you need. You don't need 20, 15, 10. Probably more than that. I don't know how many writers the WWE has, but it's too many. Um, but yeah, yes in that sense. No, because there is no other business icon, business general, like Vince McMahon. And when he does step down, that's going to be a bitter pill to swallow. So, And, again, it's my childhood. When he leaves, it's going to hurt a little bit because, great, another childhood guy is gone. <laughs> but I do think for long-term benefit, it would be better for him to step down. I don't think Vince knows what he's doing anymore in terms of the product itself. So that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> Um, who do you think is to blame for the demise of WCW? Too many people. Um, I think Eric Bischoff deserves some blame in terms of not creating new stars and relying too heavily on the Hogan's and Kevin Nash's and the Scott Halls. At the exact same time, Vince Russo deserves some blame for some very bad story writing and very bad booking. Um... Hulk Hogan deserves some blame for, you know, his crazy contracts that, again, WCW gave to him. But, you know, he was the catalyst of the whole finger poke of doom. Nash deserves some blame. It's too many people to blame to just say it's all his fault. So, I think it's a lot of people's fault why the company did not survive. So, there you go. Um, final question here. Do you think the WWE will ever go out of business? I'm going to say no. I think the WWE is strong enough and secure enough to actually last a very long time. When I'm old, I expect it to still be around. So, there you go. I'm telling you, man, the company is so big and such a, a conglomerate when it comes to sports entertainment. Um, don't be shocked if you're in your 60s and it's still on. So thank you for your questions. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.